Housing prices have been soaring. The market's been red hot. Will the housing market stay red hot? There's a reason to think so. I'll explain coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of the Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. All right, the housing market has been red hot. Last year, 2021, we finished the year with the, with, with the average house price sale, okay, at a record level up to $350,000 nearly. That's a 16% increase in the average price of a house sold. Zillow actually expects that we're gonna see that increase another 16% for this year. Now, read an article here from the from earlier this month where this author is saying, yeah, we agree. I we expect the housing market to stay red hot for years. Now I'm gonna get into that, but I disagree. I disagree and I wanna I wanna start there. So here's why I have my doubts that the housing market maybe will be strong for the for the short term, but will have its trouble sooner rather than later. Here's why. Number one, one of the reasons why housing prices have gone up and people have been so eager to move recently is they've got more disposable income. They've seen some raises. They had helicopter money. We've been you know, pumping lots of money in the system. People have had more disposable income. There's charts showing all of that. Now, Inflation, though, is starting to rein in on that, is starting to erode some of that margin, some of that disposable income, okay? If you had some disposable income and you saw an opportunity to increase your standard of living, buy a more expensive house and move, fantastic. And so you might have used some of that disposable income to buy that bigger house, but now inflation is creeping in on that. We've got serious inflation all across the board, no matter where you look, but especially at the gas pump, okay? As if if gas prices continue to stay this high, for some, you know, having the, you know, costing an extra 100 or, or $200 a month at the pump, that means there's not an extra 100 or $200 that can go towards a higher mortgage payment, okay? So to me, one of the reasons why I doubt the housing market can stay strong for too long is inflation will continue to erode some of that disposable income, making it hard for people to afford a more expensive house. Second, and this one's obvious, interest rate increases, okay? Interest rates have been, mortgage rates have been historically low. They started the year by surging and we, they were up nearly 1%. They backed down off of that since the, uh, since the Russian Ukraine crisis. But listen, if the Federal Reserve continues to take aim at at inflation and the Fed raises interest rates, we will likely see mortgage rates go up as well, okay? As that happens, I would, that, that further erodes someone's ability to afford a higher house. If you go from a 3% mortgage rate to a 4% mortgage rate on a $300,000 mortgage, that's nearly 200 bucks increase in your monthly payment. If you go to 5%, that's nearly $350 per month that it now has to not just go, not, not go to a higher cost of a house, right? Obviously you're gonna have to pay more because your, uh, your, your mortgage payment will be more because the house value, what you had to pay is higher, but this is just interest. That's $350, it doesn't go to the, your bottom line at all, doesn't help you at all, has, just goes to the bank. That is a lot then add on property taxes, add on property taxes. You think, oh my goodness, my house is worth more. This is, this is fantastic. Well, listen, the state and the, pro the county is thinking the exact same thing. My property taxes went up 10%. If that adds another 100 or 150 or $200 to your monthly payment, now all in that mortgage is gonna cost an extra 500 bucks beyond what it cost earlier. Okay, just, just for the same house or the same amount of mortgage, it's now gonna cost that much more. That's going to eat up a lot of disposable income when inflation's there and higher gas prices is there, is there as well. I think that's going to really dampen demand. So I have my doubts. I, I think right now, the housing markets will stay strong, but I don't see that lasting for years and years and years at some point this is gonna give. Now, take a look at this article. The one point that they make that really, really flies in the face that I, that I do just agree with 
is inventories, okay, inventories. The National Association of Realtors said unsold listings ending 2021 were at an all-time low, down 18% a single month. Now listen, that's, that's less than a million houses for sale across the country. That's insane. That is less than two months supply and a healthy real estate market, not like a stagnant real estate market, a healthy real estate market has three times that, has nearly six months supply at all times. So we've got, okay, when prices are going up, it's either it's, you know, supply or demand. And, and I'm telling you, demand's been fantastic because we've had disposable income. That might start to wean. But if supply stays really, really low, then that could help keep housing market or housing prices higher than what they otherwise would be because that inventory, that supply is so low. Looking further at the inventory, it's even harder for those trying to get into their first home or that don't have a lot of disposable income. The affordable housing market, unbelievably crunched right now, guys. I saw one article, I'm not, I'm not gonna source this because I'm not sure it's true, but um, that said in the month of November, 2021, that there wasn't a single house that sold below $290,000. I, I don't trust that, I just saw that headline. But my goodness, ch check this out for affordable houses. Less than 250,000 homes on the market that were affordable for people earning between 75 grand and 100, and 100 grand. Guys, that, um, that number was 650,000 houses pre-pandemic. Guys, this is, that is a fraction of the houses that would be affordable for someone in that $75,000 to $100,000 level. That is, that is very, very low supply and speaks to this challenging dynamic where I think affordability is really going to create a strain on the housing market. And yes, right now inventory is also very small, so that's continuing to push prices up. I just don't think we can la it will last that way for a long time, especially if we see mortgage rates continue to rise. Okay, so what does this mean to you? Well, listen, while inventory stay low, if you need to make a move, you are, you are looking to buy before you sell. That's backwards. I don't like that. That's an uncomfortable position. Yeah, that means you don't have to move twice. However, you're also stuck in limbo. When inventory is so low, that limbo is fine and it feels okay, but you're gonna need to buy before you sell because when you're moving, you're, have, you're gonna have a certain list of things that you want and therefore because the inventory is so low, once you find that or something that meets most of those, you've gotta capture it right away and then list your house for sale. So be aware of that financially, work with your CFP to say, well, if I'm buying before I'm selling, where am I gonna get my down payment from? How can I make the bridge financing work? Work, work with your CFP on all of that. Second, and I urge you, and guys, there's been so much money flowing around, so much change in the economy that you're probably not gonna wanna hear this geeky, dorky advice to slow you down. It is crucial. When you're looking to make a move, you gotta do the budget. You gotta build the budget. Don't just think in your head, yeah, we could afford, yeah, yeah, we could afford an extra $300 mortgage payment. We could afford an extra $400, it, I, that can work. Do the budget, make sure that it fits and account for higher property taxes, account for higher homeowners insurance, account for higher utilities. Make all of those realistic in your budget and say, can this work? Do that before you buy the house. While you're still exploring it, do the budget to make sure that it works, raise the, the property taxes, raise the homeowner's insurance, raise the utilities, maybe even look to see, well, what if inflation continues and, and other expenses go up as well? Can this thing fit? And then finally, before you buy the house, make sure you know where you stand on all of your other more important or high importance uh, financial goals. Make sure that by saying yes to this house, this more expensive house or more expensive mortgage or more expensive property taxes, while saying yes to that, you're not also saying no to something else unintentionally that you really needed or wanted to do financially, okay? So lots of people right now say, well, if that's what it costs to get the house that I want, fine, we'll afford that. And then as their margin gets pinched, what's easier? Sell that house and downsize or 
drop your 401k savings a little bit, or drop your your uh, your 529 savings a little bit, or or just say, I, I guess we're not helping the kids with, with school, or I guess we're not able to do this vacation. I guess I'm not able to retire at that time. There might be a trade-off, okay? The point is, and you're fine to make those trade-offs, the point is to make those trade-offs with your eyes open, being aware. Before you jump in and make that move to the higher, to the more expensive house, take a look and see where do you stand with the other high priority financial goals and can they all coexist together? That's the work of your, CS, your CFP, working with your CFP, doing comprehensive financial planning. So work with them on that. If you don't have one on your team, you can contact the CFP on my team. Find us online, corhorn.com. That's corhorn with a K, wisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well, or send us an email, info at corhorn.com. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.